Hello there, my name is Ramon and today I'm going to be walking you through a tutorial on how to get started with Quadrant and text data. In particular, we're going to learn a little bit about NLP, how do we create these things called vector embeddings, which are representations of raw text. You can think about it as words, uh, sentences, paragraphs, documents, and so forth. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, if you want to follow along, you can find the same notebook in the examples repository in the Quadrant organization in GitHub. And then you're gonna see it if you go to the examples, you're going to be able to find it in the fourth, there, uh, one, two, three, four, five, in the sixth directory, Quadrant 101 and text data. If you got any questions, ping me in the issues tab um, or put a comment in the video below and I'll do my best to answer. All right, so some of the learning outcomes, I hope by the end of this tutorial, you are able to generate um, embeddings from text data. Uh, I'm hoping that you are able to create collections of vectors uh, using Quadrant. This is the same as a table inside an, inside an OLTP um, or OLAP database. Um, my hope is that you are able to conduct semantic search over your own corpus of documents using Quadrant and that you are able to create a recommendation engine on top of, on top of Quadrant as well. All right, so for a bit, of, a bit of an overview, natural language processing is a branch of artificial intelligence that focuses on the interaction between computers and human language. So it involves teaching computers to understand, interpret, and generate human language in a way that is both meaningful and useful. And some of the NLP techniques that you've probably heard of or maybe have come across of are text classification, name entity recognition, sentiment analysis, or um, as the big boss lately, uh, language generation. So vector databases, on the other hand, serve as the efficient storage system for these vector representations that we can create from text data. And so they allow us to do very fast and accurate similarity search over large corpuses and data, only storing the vectors rather than the corpuses themselves. And how do we get these vectors? How do we get to a point where we have a system or a model or a function that can transform a piece of text, make it into a vector, and allow us to query that vector on top of a data on top of a database that holds other vectors for our corpus of information, of articles, of news and so forth. All right, so a couple of housekeeping things. You will need to create your own environment and install the following um, the following libraries, uh, Quadrant Client, the Transformers Library, Datasets, Torch, Sentence Transform, and then you will need to pull the latest Docker image and then uh, create a container with the latest Docker image and instantiate. So let's do that. So now I have Docker running and I went ahead and installed all of the dependencies that I needed before starting uh, this notebook. Let me zoom in a little bit. But the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to load the datasets. Uh, the load dataset function from the datasets library from the Hugging Face team is, I like to call the datasets library the pandas for unstructured data. It has a lot of useful uh, functionalities that help us um, shape and reformat unstructured data. Think about it as audio, images, text, and so forth. The data set that we're going to be using is called the AG News data set, and you can find more about it in the Hogan Face um, hub. So as you can see here, we have um, pieces of strings or pieces of text like Wall Street, Bears Claw, back into, uh, back into the black, uh, short sellers, Wall Street, dream, dwindling band of ultra cynics, yada, yada, yada. So it's a bunch of news already condensed into a smaller version, so smaller pieces of news with four labels, business, sports, uh, science and technology, and world news. When you use the um, load dataset function and you put the name of it, Hugging Face will go ahead and down, uh, or the library will 
go ahead and download the data set from the Hugging Face Hub, and then it will store in your computer. The reason we say split train is because it's a little bit counterintuitive, but we don't want to split the data set. We want just one whole training data set or one full data set. So if we don't say anything, then we're going to get one partition that is going to say train and then features and then rows. Since we don't want that, we just want straight the features, straight up the rows, then uh, we're going to say split by train. Then let's actually examine a few of the ones that we have here. So here it says Sudanese, Militiamen, disarm, militia men, disarm, say, um, they know Janjawi, 500 Sudanese uh, militia men in government service, disarm, and Western Darfur Friday. Uh, okay, so he's talking about military men in Sudan. Um, Wall Street threads, uh, treads water as traders await fresh directions. U.S. stocks were narrowly mixed yesterday and so forth. So we have a wide range of news here. And what we want to do is that we want to encode this or we want to transform these news articles into vectors that we can then upload into a collection inside Quadrant so that we can conduct similarity search or build a recommendation engine on top of this corpus of news. How do we do that? Well, before we do so, let's actually very quickly Check what do we have here. And if you are following along, you probably also need a problem. So what do we want to check out? We want to check out whether we have um, an imbalanced data set, like how many news do we have for a particular uh, how many articles do we have for a particular type of news and and so forth so now that we have that out of the way check out so it seems that we do have about exactly we have 120,000 news articles and we have 30,000 um, articles for each one of the categories that we have which are world sports science and technology and business so if we wanted to check as well well, what's the variation between the, uh, the amount of text that we have per um, the amount of text that we have per article? Well, we can create a little function that takes in the length of each one of uh, for all of the characters inside a piece of text, and then we can also plot this in the same fashion as we did before. So we are selecting the columns label length of text, the one that we just added with the little function at the top, and then we can say. Uh, pick the columns, uh, pivot the column label so that we have one column for each label of 30,000 rows and then use the values length of text, create 100 bits and then show me the distribution of all of the, the length of the characters for all of the news articles inside a category. And as you can see, we have very evenly distributed amounts of length of news, which is great. Um, it's always good to know. So. What are the steps that we need to take in order to create these vectors that we're going to be then putting into Quadrant so that we can then conduct semantic search? Well, we're going to have to tokenize our um, our text. And then after we tokenize them, then we create this representation or this input IDs. And then we create something else that is called an attention mask. Why are we creating these things? What, what is this? So the idea behind the tool that we're going to be using um, is that there is a mechanism inside our model that pays attention to different kinds of um, or which words we are trying to um, use for um, or which words are in our piece of text. It sort of pays attention to that and then to the vocabulary inside the, inside the model and then it creates some representations of it. So the mechanics of a transformer are not what is important in this tutorial itself. But the idea behind it is that we are going to create a we're going to create something that was already trained. Imagine um, looking at a bicycle and you've never ridden a bicycle before. So you've never been on a bicycle before. You've never seen it. So you're going to start by moving it, um, getting on top of it. Maybe you're going to fall. Um, you're going to start like by trial and error, figuring out how a bicycle works. But if you see a video of somebody else, maybe you're still not an expert or you're definitely not an expert on how to ride a bicycle. 
but you will have a better idea because you saw somebody else doing it. This is exactly the same idea behind a pre-trained model. We use a pre-trained model here like GPT-2 and which is available in the, um, in the Hugging Face Hub. And you can see here, you can read more about the model card and, and so forth. So we use a model that has already seen text data and has an idea about the composition of a piece of text. And then we use those waves. So we use the, the, what the model has learned and then we bring that to our use case. And we use their representation of that model to create these vector embeddings that we're then going to use for our piece of text. So we instantiate or we create an instance of a tokenizer coming from, um, from GPT-2. And then we also use um, the model as well. Um, we use the weights of the model and then we put them into a CUDA device if you have one. I do have a, um, a GPU in my computer. So I am sending that to the GPU and that way it's much, much faster to do computations uh, on this. So the tokenizer comes with a couple of things. And one of them is a um, the ability to create this long pieces of, or these tokens. These tokens are going to be representations of words, numbers, um, columns, exclamation marks, question marks, and, and so forth. And what this is, what this does is that it gives the, the representation necessary for the piece of text to be passed then into the model. So just to give you an example, before we begin, um, we got to notice that the tokenizer does not have a padding token. If you've never heard of a padding token, imagine that the, we have a max length for a sentence of five words. If we were to have, I love cats, then it only has three words. So we would need pad, pad to get to five letters. If we have, I love dogs, um, or I very much love dogs, then I have five. If I say, I do not or I do love cats, then I have four and I will need one pad, padding token. So in the first example, I need two. In the second one, I need none. In the third one, I need one. So because it doesn't come with a padding token, using pad token, but it is not yet set, we're gonna set it up as the end of string token. And then notice what we have here. We have, what does a cow say? Uh, what does a cow use to do math? A, ca a calculator. So it's a very awful, that joke, but you get the point. What we're doing here is we are creating these input vectors that say, hey, in this space uh, where the model has a vocabulary or a, a lot of vectors, a lot of numbers, find me the corresponding tokens and then pay attention to this one, this one, and this one, and this one. So we get two things. We get the attention mask and we get the input IDs, which are both necessary. If we want to convert back into or convert into tokens and look at what these tokens are, we can use the tokenizer, convert IDs to tokens, take the input IDs that we got, and then notice how this is the way or that in which GPT-2 takes in these tokens. So GCAL, it has like weird characters that represent something inside for the model. Uh, I don't know the technicalities or the specifics of how the model was trained or how the tokenizer was, was created, but this is the representation that it uses and it seems to work quite well. We can also convert uh, right back the tokens into strings, and then we get the exact same sentence back. And then if you are curious about the vocabulary size of your model, then you can use the tokenizer and then call the, the attribute vocab underscore size, and then you'll see that you have, it has about 50,257 tokens or different kinds of tokens. So now that we know the data set that we have is very evenly distributed, the, the labels that it has, um, as well as the length of the news articles that we have in our data set. Well, how can we create these vector representations for each one of the each one of the articles? Well, we say torch with torch, no wrap. The reason we're saying this is because PyTorch automatically calculates the gradient um, of, um, of anything that it does. So in order to not do that, we're gonna say no wrap, and then we're gonna create something called the M's or the embeds. Then we pass in, this is a dictionary, um, this is Python, a Python, Pythonic way of unpacking a dictionary. So we are essentially taking out the input IDs and the attention mask. 
when we do this. And then we're going to take the last hidden state or the last, yeah, the last hidden state of all of those, um, all of those vectors. And then we're going to look at the size of it. And then we're going to look at, a, at what it, at what it does. Um, so it gave us a representation. So the first number is going to be the batch size. So here we have one sentence or one document is going to be one. That document has 15 tokens. And then for each one of those tokens, we're going to have a 768 length vector with some important attributes to it. And then all of those vectors, they look like the, as the following one. Okay, so how do we create? So what we need, we don't need 15 vectors of 768 dimensions to represent one single um, sentence. What we need is one vector of 660, uh, 768. So the way we do this is with something called mean pooling. And this function, I actually found it in the excellent book called Natural Language Processing uh, with Transformers. So I highly recommend that you go through it if you want, if you want to understand a little bit more about transformers. Uh, what we're doing here is we're taking the output uh, of the model, the token embeddings. We are uh, creating an input mask expanded. We are unsqueezing the attention mask and expanding the token embeddings. Then we are summing the embeddings. And then the, we are summing the mask, dividing the two. And what we're doing is we are condensing or compressing those all of those embedding vectors for each one of the tokens in a sentence or in a document and making it up to one. Then what we do is, so if you see what we have here, now that we have applied the mean pooling function, so we put pass in the embeddings, we pass in the attention mask, and then we get back a one document or one news article with 768 dimensions. Then we can put all of this into one function. So we can say tokenizer, take all a batch of examples, take the text column, apply padding, truncate the text, return a Pythor, uh, PyTorch tensor, put it into my CUDA device, and then create the output. Pull the embeddings, and then give me a new column inside my data set called embedding that has the pool embeddings back into the CPU and back into a NumPy array. So for this, we're going to take a smaller, because we have 120,000 samples, we're going to take a smaller subset of this to make this tutorial a little bit faster. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go in batches of 128. So this is going to go um, very, very fast, depending on what you have. You might hit a memory. A out of memory error, as you can see in here. So what you can do if that happens to you is you can lower the batch size. And as you can see, so I had to put it from 128 to 32, but that was actually quite fast. And now if we evaluate the small set, we can see that we have a thousand rows, the text column, the label, the length of the text, and the embedding layer. So now let's create a small index uh, column or an index column with the length of the data set for our small data set. We're going to need that as the IDs for quadrant. And then as you can see, we can, we can grab it um, as if it were a dictionary. Then we're going to create one last column that is going to contain the names of each one of the classes inside our data set. Why do we need that? Well, we need that because later on, whenever we get to search semantically, well, uh, to do semantic search, one of the things that we probably want to do is that we want to filter by a specific condition. That condition might be the type of news that we are searching. So say, for example, we pick an article 
that belongs to the sports industry. But then we want to get recommendations based on that article for um, articles in news articles in science and technology. Well, we can use this information, this label, in, and put it inside the payload of a collection in Quadrant and then use that to filter our search, to use that to filter. Okay. So now that we have the label names, we also are going to, we're also going to need the dimension size. And now we are able to create, uh, to get started with Quadrant. So to get started, we're going to import the Quadrant client and the models module. Then we're also going to input the collection status just to check that our collection has been created successfully. We're going to co uh, connect to our local container running Quadrant right now in port 6333. And as you can see, we got successfully connected to it. Let's create a collection that is going to be called News Embeddings. So we're going to say, use my collection name and create um, a collection that takes in vectors of dimension 768 and the distance metric that we're going to use to search between those uh, vectors is going to be cosine similarity. Lastly, we want to create a payload. I mentioned that a payload is going to be this additional metadata. It's a JSON object containing metadata about the vector itself. So in a vector database, you're going to create a collection. In that collection, you don't want to have the data itself. You don't want to have the image. You don't want to have the audio, even though you can. But what you want to have is the vector representing the audio. Inside the payload, you can put things such as a URL directing you to where that um, piece of data lives at. So for example, if it's an image, you might have the URL to the image. And if the user is going to be served that vector or the representation of that vector, then you can select from the payload the URL that goes to the, to the image and then present it in front of the user. So let's look at the payload. So the payload is going to have the label. In this instance, because the news article is so short, our payload is going to have the label name and also the actual te text. If this were um, much bigger documents, or much bigger news, then we probably wouldn't put that giant piece of text inside the payload. We might put a link to where that can be found on the internet. Then the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to upsert our uh, vectors, the ID, the vectors, and the payloads that we just created into the collection that we call news, uh, news embeddings. Excellent. So now we updated that. And one of the things that we can do is that we can scroll through our um, through our collection just to make sure that everything got created correctly. As you can see, we have different records here, but we cannot see the payload. If you want to see the payload, you can change here uh, with payload, change it to a true. And then you can see all of the payloads for all of those IDs, or you can change it back to false. And you can change the vectors to true. And then you're going to get all of the vectors for however many um, IDs uh, you are scrolling through. So if I just put one, then it's also just going to give me, it's, it's also only going to give me one. Okay, so let's get started with semantic search. So we're going to have a query and we're going to select one of the um, one of the news articles inside our smaller set of news articles. And this one in particular is going to be stock script higher in New York. Um, blue chip stocks ended barely higher yesterday as a spike in oil prices to record closing levels pair earlier gains and renew concerns about the effects of high energy prices. Okay, so we have the vector that we need to search and we have the text that we want to, um, that we are representing with this vector. So what we do is we use client.search and we use our collection name and we use the query vector. So this is where the key piece of semantic search comes down to. You 
can look at the text or you can use that text to search for similar ones, but you don't, in particular, use all those words and all those sentences and all those paragraphs. You use this representation of 768 numbers. And then you say, I want to limit my search back to three. As you can see, the very first one, you can see a couple of things here. You can see the score. How similar is this document to the one, is the document that I got back to the one that I was using to search? So here we have 0 0.9999999. And that is because this is the exact same vector inside our search. So we want to avoid the very first one because it's going to be the same one if it is part of our corpus. And then we want to look at the second one and the third one. The second one still has a very high um, score of similarity. So 99% and so does the third one. But remember, we don't want to always take this as face value. We might want to actually evaluate the searches before we serve them to the user. So let's see, for example, here, it says German investor confidence surges. Uh, German investor confidence posted a surprise jump in December as relief over falling oil prices helped to offset uh, concerns. Okay, it is talking about oil prices, just like the one that we selected first. Uh, then the second one, the German economy, which grew strongly in the first half of this year um, on the back of robust exports, will see a slowdown this year as a result of the breaking effects of runaway oil. Then the third one is also talking about oil. So we did get very similar, contextually similar articles to the one that we were using to, uh, to search. So let's do another one. So now, notice what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here is I am selecting from the larger data set, I am selecting a piece of text so I'm using the choice, uh, random choice module, and I am selecting a random article that has not been encoded yet. So because I want to pass it through my function and my function takes in a dictionary, I have to select it, get the text, get the text here, and then encode it with my embed text uh, function that we created earlier. So we pass in the second query. We take in the embedding the embedding column, and then we, we select the first one because we're going to have a batch of one, and then we get all of the vectors that we have there. So notice that we have the shape of the query, which is 768, uh, 768 numbers, and then we have the first 20 elements of such a query. We're going to select a new one. Here. And we want to make it a list because Quadrant doesn't take NumPy arrays, it takes Python native objects. So we're going to say query two to list my collection, give me the first five. Let's read the one that we got. So we got drawn and quarter. It wasn't supposed to end like this for Paul Gasol in Spain. Okay, so he's talking about the NBA, he's talking about Paul Gasol. Um, and let's see what we get. So we got sports. So we got the first one, the label name is sports, the second one, sports. Third one, sports. The last one, science and technologies. Plans to hold for pro, scroll web, website, info world, reports, uh, foray in growth, law territory announced last month that has been put on a back burner. I'm not sure exactly what this one is talking about. Not all of them are very well structured pieces of text, but we are getting very similar results. Now, what if we want to filter by a specific condition? Say we have that piece of text talking about Paul Gasol um, and the NBA, but we want to get something more business-like as opposed to something in the sports arena. No point in that. So we can create a filter and we can pass in a fill condition where the key is the name of the key in the payload or the JSON object, and the value is what lies inside that um, key value pair. So we can search, uh, search in the exact same fashion. We can do um, my collection, query to list, pass in the business filter that we created and limit it to five. So notice how now we only get labels, label names of business. And then let's see. So here it says, um, loss widens in third quarter, Revlon Inc. Um, third quarter lost wine and I mean a 7% drop in sales as cosmetic giant completed an ambitious refinancing effort. So this might be similar to MBA articles. This might not be completely similar, but they are useful um, tools or useful ways of getting something similar to what we wanted. Now, notice one last thing. This is 
not particularly very similar, but it's still 99% similar. Why is that? So the reason is that GPT-2 was trained on a lot of data from the internet, and it is possible that these news articles were part of GPT-2's training data. We don't know that. Uh, but the reality is that we haven't done a key piece in coming up with these embeddings. And so we can use a very general language model to create embeddings for our pieces of text, or we can take our corpus of text fine-tune the large language model and then create embedding vectors for that corpus of text that we use to uh, fine-tune our model. So what if there was a better, slightly better representation for our use case rather than GPT-2, a super general model? Well, the answer is there is one. So let's try another one as we try the recommendations API of Quadrant. So here we are using sentence transformers. And Sentence Transformers is uh, an incredibly useful tool. Um, sentence Transformers. It was, you can install it with pip install Sentence Transformers, and I showed that at the beginning. Um, it is a Python framework for state-of-the-art sentence, text, and image embeddings. So you can do pair, image, text, pairs as well. It's, a, it's an extremely good model. And it works really, really well off the bat. So we're going to try this one and see what kinds of recommendations do we get once we encode our model. So we're going to instantiate a model um, of Sentence Transformer. We're going to use the old mini LM L6 V2. Um, you can read more about it in the official documentation for Sentence Transformers. This is the, um, the default one that they use to showcase the examples on their documentation site. Then we're going to create another function called get uh, st embeddings or get uh, sentence transformer embeddings. We're going to encode the batch of text, and then we're going to return these examples. As you can see, this is this goes quite fast, and we didn't even have to batch the um, the way in which we did. It. So now that we have the small set, notice that we have another column called embeddings too. And then we can create a new collection. We're going to call it Better News, since our assumption is that sentence transformers with this model is going to be a much better representation than GPT-2, the super general model that we were using to encode all that text. So the parameters are going to be set to the length of the embeddings too, whatever that is. If you want to check it out, you can extract this piece over here. I believe it is 512, but don't quote me on that. It might be oh, 384 dimensions. And we are going to observe all of the vectors in a batch. So we're going to say small set IDX for the IDs. We're going to use the second embedding, and then we're going to use the same payloads we used earlier. So now that operation went through successfully. And then we're going to check out some sort of text, 700, whatever 780 is equal to. Here we have IBM adds four-way 550 servers to new i5 product line, IBM Corp. OK, so he's talking about some servers. He's talking about adding, um, adding more to a line, some product line in, inside the company. So that's great. Let's create that. Let's encode that. And we got some text, not the text. And now we have an array here. So let's say there is a particular article we actually liked, and that one was 707. So here we have 780, which talks about IBM. And here we have one article that we like. We're just going to call it 707. Let's see what it, what it has. So that is at ID. 707 and then it talks about google desktop last thursday um release a version of its online search for your computer it wanted to test drive it uh before reporting 
knowing the excruciating delays using Windows search, I can say after only a weekend. So again, it is a summarized article, but the one that we selected is talking about IBM, adding more service. And then the second one talks about Google releasing some new search component or capability. So what do we do here? We use the third query, we make it into a list, and then we say article we like, index. So we're passing the 707 here. So we're saying this is a positive one. So imagine the way the recommendation API works is, imagine you are a front-end developer and you created the logic for your application where uh, your users can give you a thumbs up if they like something, that's gonna be a positive review, and a thumbs down if they didn't like it. So in this particular instance, we like the news about Google's new uh, version of search for your computer. So we like that article and we wanna see more articles like this one, given our IBM article that we selected. What we get here is five new articles about science and technology, science and technology, science and technology, and so forth. And then for example, this one, so you can see AOL launches new portal, test desktop, search America, America Online on Thursday confirmed it is testing a new search engine that scans for files on a PC. Hard drive mirroring a similar product unveiled this week by Google. By Google. Okay, so these are very, very similar. And notice how now the scores are not outrageously high like those with um, from the embeddings created with GPT-2. So now we have a 44% match to our query vector. Um, and then 61% match the first one. So we don't necessarily, because we gave a positive one, we don't necessarily get, we don't get directly our vector of search as the first one, as the most um, similar one, but we get different ones right off the bat. Yahoo details, desktop search plans. So clearly we have one of technology with IBM, adding service and so forth. And then we have one about search and Google that we really, really like. Now we're going to get very similar ones in that space of technology to the one that we query. So now say we have an article that we actually liked, another one that we like, and that one is about workers pushing for structure change in GM Europe representative employees at General Motors Corp, Corp uh, in Europe have discussed a major overhaul of the corporate structure in negotiations with management. The chief employee representative said in an interview published on Sunday, so we, we like pushing for workers' rights. And that index is 412. And then say there's an article that we don't like. Interest rates expected to rise, we don't like that. We don't like anything that talks about interest rising. So um, say there's some other text that we want to search. United may offer Malcolm Blazer seat on board of services, Manchester United's place so this is talking about sports. This is talking, uh, talking about Manchester United. And one of the things that we want to do, we want to convert that, in, we want to encode that into a vector representation. So we're going to call it query four. That's some other text talking about the Manchester United. And then what we want to do, notice here, we want to pass in those two positive vectors, the one talking about Google search and the one talking about workers' rights. Those are two things that we want to know. One is world news and the other one is science and technology. And then the one that we don't like might be considered business because it's interest rates going up. And then we want to limit the search, the results that we get back to eight. But let's see what we get. So this one at the top says th about 35% match. And it says, Mr. Bill Gates, um, you green... Uh, no, Google, Microsoft Corp isn't often an, under, an underdog in anything. So when the software power has released its search engines, it was anxious to give it a whirl. Okay. Um, so he's talking about search engines, Yahoo details, desktop search plan. That's the same one that we got earlier. Microsoft heats up search engine war. The launch of Microsoft new search engine has ignited a new war for control of the internet. Okay, so we're talking about um, giants fighting with each other uh, over search. Uh, we might see uh, something about workers' rights. We might not. We might need to evaluate more than eight samples to be able to capture uh, or to be able to get a better sense of what we are getting back recommended. But the idea is that you can play with this. You can fine-tune the corpus of text that you have on your, on your specific data set. 
Um, and then you can create even better results for your users. And then depending on how you want to create the logic on your uh, user interface, you might want to give your users the ability to give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down so that you can add those positive and negative vectors into the search query. Then lastly, um, say we take this away and then we leave the another article that we like, which was the one about workers' rights, and then the one that we didn't like, which was about um, uh, interest rates rising. We can also put in a threshold or we can give the user the ability or the option to say, I don't want um, articles that are less than 30% similar to the one that I am searching for. And that is very powerful because sometimes just because an article that came back as 0.9% similar, so 9%, um, just because it came back doesn't mean that we need to serve it to our users. Maybe it is more useful to give them a random article back than to give them or use another kind of criteria to give them an article back that to, than to give them one that is only 9% similar to their query vector or to their query act article. So this is the last one. And then you can evaluate it yourself. It's talking about businesses. Oh, in this one, we are passing. Um, we are, yes, in this one, we are passing the threshold of 0 0.3. So let's see what we get here. So we get a business. Disney board aims to find a new CEO by June and so forth. Okay. So it's talking about an employee, a worker, um, and he's saying he's trying to find one. So it's not technically workers' rights, but it's a little bit similar to what we're trying to get. And notice that the scores of what we, even though we limit the search to eight, we only got back about four, uh, four results. That is because of our threshold um, component or our threshold parameter there. All right. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think of it. And um, yeah, until the next one. Thank you. One last thing, if you want to check the, um, the collections that we have created today, make sure you run client get collections and you'll see all of the collections inside the Quadrant storage directory that we created when we um, ran our container, when we started running our container, our Quadrant container. All right, that's it for today. Thank you, everyone.